Recently on the Strength Running Podcast, I had the CEO of Zero Shoes on to talk about minimalist shoes. And we got into an interesting discussion on what exactly a minimalist shoe is. And so I wanted to record this video today to talk about what minimalist shoes actually are, the seven characteristics of minimalist running shoes, so that if you're flirting with the idea of potentially wearing less shoe, and there's certainly some good reasons to do that, if you are thinking about this, here's how to think about buying minimalist shoes. And let's also remember the fact that you don't have to go full minimalist because minimalism is really a spectrum. There is a wide range of shoes out there, and some of them have some minimalist characteristics, and some of them have other different minimalist characteristics. And we don't necessarily have to choose shoes that are fully on the 100% minimalist end of that spectrum. We can use a more gradual approach to get used to wearing less shoe, maybe a more neutral, less supportive shoe. And this is going to help you develop a little bit more strength. It's going to reinforce better running form. And I think it's really great for injury prevention. If you just do this transition, this gradual transition to wearing more minimalist shoes, if you do it slowly, methodically, and you're really careful about doing too much too soon. First, let me say that if you're a runner that's maybe run cross country or track at the high school or college level, you probably incorporated a lot of minimalism into your training without really thinking about it. And that's because as a track or cross country athlete on a school's team, you were likely racing and doing a lot of your workouts in your racing shoes. And if you're running track or cross country, you're probably wearing spikes. You know what? They're minimalist. You are certainly getting a very neutral, very unsupportive shoe underneath you when you're wearing spikes. And for these types of athletes, you've been getting a lot of the benefits of minimalism without even really recognizing it. Here are my spikes from indoor and outdoor track. When I was in college, I wore these for everything from the 800 on up to the 5,000 meter distance. These are the Nike Ventilus spikes. Look how gorgeous they are. And you can see that there's not a lot to these shoes. They are very flexible. There's actually a slight heel to toe drop and we'll get into some of these characteristics soon, but this is probably most runners introduction to minimalism, racing shoes. And so if that's you, great. You're already halfway there. You're already doing a big chunk of your training and your racing in minimalist shoes and you are running fast without a lot of support. You're building that strength. You're reinforcing proper running form you're doing a lot right. Now, if you haven't run cross country or track on a team, then you maybe have not wore spikes yet. And there are a lot of other types of minimalist shoes out on the market, but most shoes are not fully minimalist. That's because there are a lot of characteristics of minimalist shoes. And let's go through them right now so that you know if you're looking at a pair of shoes, you can determine whether or not it's a minimalist pair. Minimalist shoes typically are very lightweight. You're not gonna find a minimalist shoe that is really, really heavy. And so if you are looking at a shoe that is much more than maybe seven to nine ounces, it probably fails this test for this particular quality of minimalist shoes. So if you're looking for a 100% minimalist shoe, you're gonna to wanna to find a very light shoe that doesn't add a lot of extra weight to your feet. Another big characteristic of minimalist shoes is that they have a very low stack height. And a stack height is simply the overall height of the shoe above the ground. And there are some shoes like Hoka's, for example, that are somewhat minimalist. They have some of these characteristics, but they are a really high stack height shoe. And so they do fail in this regard when it comes to minimalism. Hoka's are a little bit more of an interesting hybrid shoe, and we talk about this more on that podcast episode. But let me show you my pair of Zero shoes. These shoes are completely flat on the bottom, and they're very close to the ground. The stack height on these Zero shoes are very, very low. And so they are excellent minimalist shoes in that regard. Minimalist shoes also don't have a lot of support. So if you put on a pair of minimalist shoes and you're feeling that there's a fairly high arch support in the shoe, then you know you're probably not dealing with a minimalist shoe. These shoes 
don't really have anything on the bottom. You can actually take out the insert in here and you could wear them without it. This is actually possible in this shoe. It puts you a little bit closer to the ground and you can see here that they, they haven't built this up in any way. There's no additional arch support. This doesn't rise off the ground anywhere on the insole to help support the bottom of your foot. So in this way, it's a great minimalist shoe. They're also a great case study in having a very wide toe box. A couple other shoes are really great at this. I know Ultras have very wide toe boxes. And when you think about it, a minimalist shoe is really designed to allow your foot to move without shoes. So if you have a narrow toe box, that toe box is going to be crimping your toes closer together. When in fact, what you really want is your toes to be just in a neutral position. You want them as splayed out as they want to be. And that'll give you a wider base of support. It'll give you more stability and it will definitely improve your running form as well. Minimalist shoes also have a zero heel to toe drop. And a heel to toe drop is simply the drop in height difference between the heel and the forefoot of the shoe. And so, you know, if you think of this shoe, this shoe is very flat. When you're wearing this, when I'm wearing this, I am just flat on the ground. Now, some shoes have more of a lift on the heel and that can actually be helpful for runners who might be just coming back from an Achilles injury and they don't wanna put a lot of extra stress on their Achilles while they're rehabbing it, while they're just running a little bit as they start to build their fitness. But if you're someone who doesn't have any Achilles problems, spending some time, even just casually, not necessarily running, in shoes that have a zero heel to toe drop will further lengthen your soleus, your calf, and your Achilles tendon and put them in a natural neutral position the way that they're supposed to be, the way that they are designed to be. The upper of a minimalist shoe should also be relatively simple. You don't want a lot of weight. You don't want a lot of support. You don't want a lot of extra fabric getting in the way of your foot moving the way that it wants to move. And finally, you want a minimalist shoe that is flexible. If you find a pair of shoes that is very rigid, that can't be bent in almost any area of the shoe, then it's probably not a true minimalist shoe. And you can see how these zero shoes are just incredibly flexible. You can bend them almost any which way, which I really like. They're very, very flexible and I can feel my feet moving a little bit more in them, gripping the ground and what that tells me is that I'm using more of the muscles in my feet and that's exactly what you want in a pair of minimalist shoes. You wanna stress your feet, give them a little bit more work to do so that they get stronger. Now, a big caveat, this video is not me saying that you should be running in minimalist running shoes. I take a little bit more of a hybrid approach to minimalism. I look at shoes like these, very minimalist, these are flexible, zero drop, low stack height, wide toe box shoes. If, if there's a minimalist running shoe, zero shoes hit the nail on the head. This is a great minimalist shoe. But <laughs> that doesn't mean I think you should be running in minimalist shoes all the time. Because if you're someone who's training for a race, maybe you're running 30 miles a week, 40 miles a week, you're running a workout, a long run, you cannot just switch from wearing your normal trainers that you've been wearing for years into shoes that give you virtually no support. The stress level of wearing these minimalist shoes is probably gonna lead you to get hurt. So I like to treat them as training tools, just like a long run, just like a deadlift, just like a kettlebell. A pair of minimalist shoes is a tool that you can use to accomplish certain things. So I like to use minimalist shoes casually so that I'm keeping my feet and lower legs in a more neutral position for most of my time outside of running. I also like to use minimalist shoes during faster workouts where you get a little bit more bang for your buck wearing minimalist shoes. You know, you're running fast, you're engaging in you know faster running so that your range of motion is a lot wider and that does put a lot more stress on your feet. And so you can wear it for a re relatively short period of time, relatively low volume, but get a lot of strength out of it. You can also wear minimalist shoes for some of your easy runs. Now, I would definitely save maybe one recovery run a week where you're wearing supportive shoes. You're not trying to stress your feet any more than you really have to. But 
for some of your runs, a short base run, maybe one recovery run of two during the week, wearing a minimalist shoe is a great way to help build that extra strength to reinforce good form and just give you yourself a little bit more experience wearing less shoe. All right, question of the day, guys. I wanna hear, are you wearing minimalist shoes right now? What's your favorite brand? I know Zero Shoes is a little bit more of a niche shoe. That's why I was so interested in trying it. You know, there's the big brands out there, the Adidas, the Nikes, but I'd love to hear what niche brands for minimalist shoes that you have tried. I would love to experiment with them myself. So leave a comment under this video and let's hear what you're wearing. Here are my shoes from indoor and outdoor.